Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Well, guess what, everybody? This is video number 90. I started October 1st, 2018 and I'm ending December 31st, 2018. A series of 90 videos every single day I posted one except on December 25th. So it's been a long journey. Hopefully some of you, if not all of you, have gone on uh, this journey with me of watching these videos. Hopefully they've been exciting for you. Hopefully you've learned a lot of information. But let me just tell you before I go into my very last topic, let me tell you a couple of things. First of all, my uh, website is Good Parenting Brighter Children. There are six topics that I uh, blog about. Parenting, grandparenting, books, music, traditions, and nutrition. And you can go on there. It's very, very easy to, na to navigate. Also, I have a library uh, resource or a resource library, rather. And you can sign up with your email. It's protected. And uh, once you give me your email, then I will send you the password for it. And there are tons of books, CDs, all different kinds of things at your disposal. And it's, it's definitely worth it. In terms of these YouTube videos, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, please, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. Then you'll get different notifications of different things that I post. Now, starting approximately the end of January, 1st of February, I'm starting a podcast. Most of these videos have been pretty short between, you know, five and 10. Some of them have been like 14 minutes, but most of them have been in the five to 10 uh, minute range. So I'm going to start a podcast and those will be a long, uh, longer, probably about 20 to 25 minutes. And I'll be interviewing people on those as well. So if you have enjoyed what you've seen so far, then please continue with me and please continue following me. And thank you for all of those for your support. This very last one, I want to talk about the importance of lifelong learning. There is an amazing tradition in Judaism that when a child says their first word from the Torah, their first word in Hebrew, the rabbi stops them and gives them something sweet to eat so that they will always associate learning with sweetness. Now, I've even seen online where the, the letters of, you know, the Hebrew alphabet are drenched in uh, honey and the, the child is able to take some of them and to lick the honey off. Um, <clears throat> it should be apparent and obvious to you that I love learning and it's such an important thing and you want to instill within your children the love of learning no matter what it is. There are so many hundreds of thousands of subjects out there that they can fall in love with over and over again. And if you instill within them a love of learning and that they see you as a parent love learning, then they will want to love learning as well. Now, <clears throat> before I get into some of the specifics of this topic, let me address uh, something that a number of young <clears throat> mothers have said to me. They said, well, when you were raising kids, it was so much easier because you had that extended family with all those grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody helped everybody else and we don't have any of that today. And that's why we can't accomplish as many things as you did. Well, I have news for you. I don't know what generation that they're talking about. Maybe that happened in the 20s and 30s, or maybe it ha happened in the 1600s, but it most certainly didn't happen when I was raising kids, and it didn't happen to any of my friends either. Um, we lived in a different state from any family, and so there was no extended family, no grandparents, no aunts, uncles, cousins, relatives, nothing. We were on our own. Uh, we had to be the entertainment of our kids. We were the ones that taught our kids. We. We were the, as parents, we were a one-man show, so we were going through the same kind of trenches that every parent goes through. And so it was with my friends as well. There was only one of my friends that actually did have extended family, and her, her parents and, and that day, the grandparents of her kids, they were not there at their beck and call and disposal to babysit the kids and help out and do all of that. So I think the biggest problem between the 21st century of raising kids and when I was raising my kids most of the time, and I was raising kids in the 21st century, and when you become a parent, you're always a parent. But the difference was is technology. We didn't have cell phones to distract us, and we didn't have video games that we could use to babysit for our kids. Did we have TV? Yeah, but it was monitored. And most, um, we were dedicated parents, and all the parents that I knew, we monitored that television set. So you have more things that you can give your kids rather than your time. 
and that's something that you want to be very careful at. Now what's interesting to me is I follow a number of my college students on Instagram and I've noticed that several of them have gotten on and said I just took a 72 hour or a week long break from social media and I cannot believe all the time that I had. I can't believe all the time that I had to play with my children. I can't believe all the time that I had to actually clean up my house and get you know, my laundry caught up and all of these different things. It was amazing. It was astounding to me how much time I waste on social media platforms. So ask yourself, um, is it really that you're lacking in time to spend with your kids or is it that you're spending so much time on that so those social media platforms is that where you're spending your time? Because if that's true, you definitely will have some regrets later on. All right, so let's get back to lifelong learning. Okay, there's a couple of things that you want to understand. The brain is an amazing muscle and it gets better with age, it's like wine, as long as you use it, okay? So they have found in a number of different books that um, the more that you study, the more that you learn, the more that you're creating and so forth, the more things, the better your brain gets. Now think about when, how you thought when you're in elementary school, then in high school, then in college, and now as an adult, you can see that your brain has gotten better with age. You can learn seven facts per second for the rest of your life and you will still have tons of room in your brain to learn more. The brain has been compared to a multi-dimensional musical piece of a piece of music because it's so intricate and it's so varied and it's so amazing. Uh, another thing is your brain is in terms of intellectual cells, it's not just in your head. Uh, Candace Pert, the author of Molecules of, of Emotion, said that there are intellectual cells throughout your entire body. That's another reason why you want to stay healthy and well, so that those intellectual cells work. They also know that exercise actually improves our memories and our minds. They also know that we are extraordinarily unique. Every single human being out there is different. There are no two people who are alike. Uh, our our dreams are not alike, how we solve problems, they're not alike. Our handprint is not alike, our footprint is not alike, our earprint is not alike. There is nothing the same about any two individuals, even with um, identical twins. They too have a lot of different differences about them. Years ago, I saw this uh, in a book that I read, and I went online and I found these images, and it shows you how amazing, even though we live in this universe and we're surrounded by these huge, huge, enormous planets, the one thing that is still the most amazing are human beings. At the top one we see Earth, it's pretty big in comparison to these other planets of Mars, Mercury, and Venus. Pluto is no longer considered a planet. Then we have down here with Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now the Earth looks pretty small in comparison. This particular one shows the Sun, and now the Earth is tiny. It almost is the size of a like a, a pinhead, and down here we have these huge planets of Arcturus, Polydex, uh, Cyrus, and the Earth now is so tiny that you cannot even see it in comparison to these. And as I looked at those and I thought, these are so interesting and this is so um, incredible, but still the most amazing, amazing thing that's ever been created has been a human being, of how intricately unique we all are. So, we have the capacity to learn throughout our lives, and if we take advantage, we can learn many things. Let me tell you some stories about a few people. In 1997, I read in Look Magazine about some studies that were being done on nuns. This is um, Dr. David Snowden. He did a lot of the studies, and it was interesting because they were studying... <clears throat> nuns of why they were living to 105, 106 years old. And I remember thinking at the time it was rather humorous to me because number one, nuns are not married, they don't have a husband and they don't have kids. So that adds about 75 years to your life. But what they did find is that nuns were doing all these different types of interesting things. They were learning throughout their lives. Now, a lot of these nuns dedicated their brains to science after they died. So when the scientists went in and they were studying their brains, there was a number of them that had the plaques of Alzheimer's, but they never showed any of the symptoms while they were alive. Nothing, none of them. 
So they were wondering is if we keep busy and if we keep maintaining and becoming lifelong learners, if we get plaques on our brain, if those other rich experiences that we keep doing our entire lives, like playing a musical instrument, like doing crossword puzzles, like playing games, like exercising and reading books and going to musicals and doing all of those rich experiences that build our brain, if we do get the plaques, if all of those other experiences will override them. Now there's other examples of people. My father-in-law, John Habermeyer, began taking up watercolor. He wanted to, he was, an aeros, he was an aerospace engineer. And when he retired, he decided he wanted to learn how to paint and to draw. And then when he was 75, he decided he wanted to learn watercolors. My own father died at the age of 95. He would have been 100 years old this year. He played the piano and he loved to play the piano and he loved to exercise every day, which helped him into old age. There's another uh, person by the name of John Holt, and he wrote a book, It's Never Too Late. When he was 50 years old, he decided that he wanted to learn the cello. So he learned it, and five years later, he joined an orchestra. We're all familiar with Grandma Moses. At the age of 67, her husband had died, and she wanted to have a hobby. She had uh, raised all of her children, her five children, on a farm, and she says, I'm not a woman that you have to throw sugar at, meaning I'm not the type of woman that needs to be spoiled. So she decided to take up drawing and painting. She died at the age of 101 and she is a uh, household name. Everyone knows about Grandma Moses and she has become an icon for all of us, an example for all of us of the importance of lifelong learning. Leonardo da Vinci was another one. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci, he was not only an artist, a painter, a sculptor, an inventor. He was an amazing, amazing person. At the end of his life, when he died, he um, made a formal apology to God because he said, there's so much more that I want to create. There's so much more that I want to do. I'm sorry that I didn't do it fast enough while I lived on this earth. And there are many, many other examples of lifelong learners. Now, let me give you a couple of ideas on, of books that are fun kind of books that you can enjoy yourself, and I'll give you a couple for your children. If you're interested in nutrition, if you want to start an organic garden, if you want to do interesting things and you want to involve your kids, this is Barbara King Solver's Animal Vegetable Miracle, one of my very favorite books. Look into this one. If you want to increase the creativity of your family and of yourself, look into A Whack on the Side of the Head by Roger Van Uck. This is a really fun one. You can also buy the Creative Whack Pack that goes along with it. This will give you different ideas of how connectedness and word association and all of these different things will help you to become a more creative person. There's also this one by Daniel Goleman, The Creative Spirit. I love this one. It's so interesting about different things that you can do to not only be a lifelong learner, but to create, to create those situations in your life where you'll be an, an incredibly creative individual. And the thing is, example is everything to your kids. Do you want them to be avid readers? They need to see you reading. They need to also be able to ask you questions about the books that you're reading. Are you reading histories? Are you reading biographies? Are you reading fiction? Are you reading nonfiction? Or what books are you reading? And tell your children why you're reading them. What about a musical instrument? If your child is taking a musical instrument and learning a musical instrument, what about you? Why don't you join in with them? Why don't you learn how to play the oboe or the flute or the clarinet or the piano? Take those instruments, they'll particularly like it because when it comes time to practicing, they'll want to see that you're a disciplined and responsible person and that you will practice and learn as well. What about newspapers and good magazines? Do, they see your, do your children see you reading the newspaper, reading magazines, staying up on current events and what is going on in the world? Do you share that information with them? What about exercise and what about nutrition? What about kinds of things do they see you? Do they see you choosing bad foods or are you showing and being an example and choosing good types of food? Grandparents, you're the same way. Remember I said way back when on one of these videos that you only have influence of two generations, your children and your grandchildren. So not only do you want to be an example of lifelong learning to your children, but you also want to be an example of lifelong learning to your grandchildren so that they have a legacy. I often thought before I started these 90 videos, I thought, okay, what if no one watches them? I thought, well, what I am leaving behind is I'm leaving behind a legacy for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and other uh, generations that will follow thereafter. They will know something about me that I loved to learn. 
that I read, that I played a musical instrument, that I practiced, that I did all of those things that I'm preaching and talking about. So explain to your children how much you love to learn. And if there was one legacy that you wanted to leave with them, it would be a love of learning. Thank you so much for joining me over these 90 videos. Again, I hope it's been a worthwhile journey for you. I appreciate your support and I would say I'll see you tomorrow, but actually I'll see you next on my podcast. Thank you again.